Guys, this is a great example of when in doubt, throw it in Desmos and see what happens, right? This thing looks insane. The question is barely understandable too. Like, I don't even know what's going on, but I get it's a circle. They're talking about the radius being uh, this NP and uh, what is the value of N? Well, okay, uh, let's see what happens if I just put this in Desmos. Luckily, I took all the boring typing out of it and just did it already. It's already in there. And then it offers me the opportunity to add a slider. So um, I'm actually uh, surprised that it was that quick. I thought I'd have to force it because sometimes when there's like a P on both sides or like the variable on both sides, the letter on both sides, it uh, makes us type it ourselves. But if that ever happens to you and you want to put a slider, it like kind of doesn't offer you the opportunity, just type P equals and then type a number like one, like it gave me here. So when I have one, I have a circle now, right? And I can adjust it and the circle seems to move and change or whatever, but yeah, let's keep it simple. Let's go back to one and keep it there. And then let's move this, you can see it. And here's one thing to note with circles, or basically anything that is gonna be on um, the Desmos graph, is it allows us to tap the maximum and minimum. And so normally with, with anything too, we'll also get y-intercepts and x-intercepts. If it's a parabola, right, we have the vertex. Well, what is a vertex? It's a minimum, right? So Desmos is very good about giving us those landmarks. And for a circle, the maximum and the minimum are going to form a diameter. So we can look at these points and compare them, and they're going to give us the radius, right? So what's the difference between these two points? Well, the difference between the seven and the one is six. So that's the diameter. We need the radius, so the radius is half the diameter. You should know that, that's basic geometry, so that's three. Now, is that the answer? In this case, yes. Well, actually, let's not get rid of that quite yet. In this case, yes, because they're telling us the radius of the circle is NP. So the radius is NP, and what did we make P? We made P one. So three is equal to N times one. So what's N? It's three. That's it. Right, this looks like it's gonna be insane. Look at this question. Look at that equation. I've never seen it like that before in my life. And yet, throwing it into Desmos lets us visualize what's going on. And we could have picked different values for P and we can see this thing growing and shrinking and moving around. And I'm sure there's some big mathematical concept that at heart here that, that makes us understand why this relationship is what it is. I don't care. I don't care. I just want the points. And so putting it into Desmos lets us visualize it and make connections that our brain might not be able to make if we're just thinking conceptually and algebraically. So when in doubt, throw something in Desmos. But, you know, as you go through, uh, pay attention to my videos for all the practice tests because I will kind of show you when Desmos might not be efficient. Here, 100% is the way to go. The explanation on the college board is insane. Don't do that. Just throw it in Desmos, let the slider do the work, and that way you can get a question that's uh, looks really hard, but even though it's, it is a number six, right? It's, it's supposed to be, it is the hard module, but it's number six, so it's supposed to be easy. I think it's a little misplaced, but um, nevertheless, it is uh, a question that we can get very easily by using the Desmos calculator.